Welcome to our service this morning when we celebrate St. Michael and All Angels Day. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In Christ, we are united with all the saints on earth and in heaven. Knowing our unworthiness, let us ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. We have lived for this world alone, and doubted our home in heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command, they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please would you sit for our readings. from the book of Genesis. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and to your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Revelation. War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. 
The dragon and his angels fought back, but they were defeated, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. The great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels were thrown down with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. But they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they did not cling to life, even in the face of death. Rejoice then, you heavens, and those who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and to the sea, for the devil has come down to you with great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. This is the word of the Lord. And now, before our gospel reading, the choir will sing, Like a mighty river flowing is the perfect peace of God. The music by Noel Tredinick. According to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? 
Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Imagine you are a historian or social scientist 100 years from now. You are trying to understand the culture of our times in the 2020s. You read about growing secularization, but you observe many things that do not fit that pattern. Angels are an example of this. Signs of the importance of angels in our culture are all around us, in places where you might expect them and where you might not. Representations of angels are certainly impossible to miss in our church. It is the angels behind me in our wonderful golden apps that remind us that heaven and earth are full of thy glory. But angels go much wider into our culture. The Angel of the North is probably the best known piece of public art in our country. There are plenty of famous songs about angels. I'm sure you can all think of one. Abba's line, I believe in angels, is just one of the references that are commonly known. And angels I have found in funeral ministry are often spoken of by people who have lost loved ones. My angel is now in heaven, or my darling is now with the angels. Although angels have a strangeness about them, an otherworldliness, they also seem to be accessible, both to believers and those who claim no particular faith. Today we have had three Bible readings, all of which reference angels. Let us look deeper into the meaning of these angelic appearances and what might be their meaning for us today. Our New Testament reading was from the book of Revelation, a book of visions which can be hard to understand. A friend of ours went to the island of Patmos, where tradition has it that St. John wrote the book of Revelation in a cave. He said that sitting there gave him real insight into the last book of our Bible. Our friend imagined St. John observing and living with the sky, the stars and the great forces of nature. He said it gave him an understanding of what these writings might be about. A contemplation of another realm, an unveiling of God's creative power and his purpose for all of creation, heaven and earth. The revelation of John 
is a book about both heaven and earth, one realm and the other, but all part of God's creation. And these writings, in their cosmic significance, are for all time. Parts of the book undoubtedly had particular relevance to the early Christians in their own struggles with the authorities. The book has messages which are enduring. This book is about heaven and earth. In today's reading, Michael the great archangel introduced in the Old Testament in the book of Daniel summons all his angels, as we heard, to fight against the dragon and his angels. For the early Christians in their battle for survival amidst false accusations and persecution, there is a message of hope here. And it is interesting that the writer gives the praise for the victory over evil, not just to Michael, but to Jesus and his followers. For it is through Christ's sacrifice and our faithfulness that evil cannot prevail. In both our Old Testament and Gospel readings, there is again this theme of the connection between heaven and earth. I think Jesus must have had in mind Jacob's ladder when he spoke to Nicodemus and said, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God descending and ascending upon the Son of Man. Angels were seen as messengers this is the very meaning of the word, and connect us between the heavenly and earthly spheres. In the letter to the Hebrews, there is an extension of this definition. They are called God's ministering spirits, sent forth to serve. In the story of the dream at Bethel, Jacob, like the author of the book of Revelation, was close to nature. He lay on a stone and dreamed of a ladder set up on earth and reaching to heaven with angels ascending and descending. In this story, as with some others in the Old Testament involving angels, it is not actually the angels who speak, but God himself. And it was the Lord's presence that Jacob remembered when he woke up. He felt a strong sense that the Lord was there in that place. He had had a revelation. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. He was afraid and awestruck by his experience, but exultant in the sure knowledge that where he was standing was none other than the house of God and the gate of heaven. Some people describe such places as thin places. This idea comes from Celtic spirituality. Thin places because the boundaries of heaven and earth seem closer than we normally appreciate. And revelations in these places can take different forms. We might have a dramatic realization like Jacob did, or a quieter revelation of God's presence. When I was on my rural parish placement last summer, the vicar there took me on a walk high into the hills. She said that she had had a conversation with a farmer just at the point where we were standing at that moment. Although he was not a regular churchgoer at that time, he liked the idea of thin places and felt that instinctively he understood the idea of a connection between the earthly and the spiritual realms. 
in our supposedly more secular culture, we human beings, God's creatures, still have an awareness that our lives are more than just the day-to-day -day tasks that fill our time. We may be caught by complete surprise, like Jacob was, or come to a quiet realization like the farmer did. Whoever we are, and however God tries to reach out to us, let us resolve to be open in our lives on this earth to the messages of the angels from the realms of glory. Amen. Let us now stand to affirm our faith in the words of the creed. And I ask you to join in the words at the end, Amen, I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. I, believe. I believe. And now we sit as the choir sings the anthem, O come ye servants of the Lord, the music by Christopher Ty.
As we come to our time of intercession, at the end of each petition, I will say, Lord, hear us. And I invite you to respond, Lord, graciously hear us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, by his blood, your Christ has ransomed us to you and has made us a kingdom and priests to you, our God. As the angels minister to you in heaven, strengthen your church to serve you here on earth. As we pray for those who have been ordained priest and deacon this weekend, we ask your blessings, Lord, on all we do to minister in your name. And we pray for guidance as to how that ministry will be shaped in the future. Lord, hear us. Lord, Father in heaven, when the angels greeted the birth of your Son, they sang for joy, glory to God and peace on earth. Bless with Christ's peace the nations of the world. We pray for those lands ill prepared for the COVID-19 epidemic, for those who do not enjoy the health care that we do. We pray for those fleeing warfare and violence and for all refugees driven from their homelands. Lord, hear us. Father in heaven, your Son has promised to your children the care of the guardian angels who look upon your face. Protect by your mercy our neighbors, families, and friends. We pray for all those we minister to, those with us today, and those joining us through the power of the internet. And we pray for our young people at this time, especially for those who are starting or restarting university courses. Lord, hear us. Father in heaven, you give your angels charge over those who trust in you to guard them in all their ways. Be with those in trouble. Rescue them and show them your salvation. We pray for our police forces, remembering especially those officers in Croydon caught up in the killing of a colleague. We remember all who need our prayers at this time especially those who we are given the privilege to minister and care for. Lord, hear us. Father in heaven, your angel declares, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Blessed indeed, says the Spirit, for they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Enfold in your love those who are dear to us, those who now rest in the Lord after their labors, and all who come in faith to your judgment seat in heaven. Lord, hear us. Father in heaven, the angels sing by day and night around your throne. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. With Michael, prince of the angels, who contends by our side. With Gabriel, your herald, who brings glad tidings. With Raphael, the protector, 
who ministers your healing. And with the whole company of heaven, we worship you, we give you glory, we sing your praise and exalt you forever. And so joining all our prayers and praises, our hopes and fears, we say together the words that our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There are a few notices this morning. Um, you may have noticed on the way in two jigsaws made for us featuring our wonderful gold and angels behind me, one of the entire apps and one of the windows in particular. Um, those at the moment are on sale to church members only, but later in the week will be on general sale. So if you'd like to purchase one or both um, of those, please let me know very quickly so I don't sell them all first. Um, I can order some more before Christmas, but we have a small stock already, and those are £17.50 each and all for uh, church funds. You may also have noticed on the way in some rather strange dots on the left-hand door. Um, that is our own unique QR code for Track and Trace. So if you don't want to stand in line and give your name and number to the sides persons and you have a smartphone, you can check yourself in the express lane on the way in. Um, but that, that will work and register you straight away on the track and trace. We are just about a month away from our annual meeting, which feels weirdly strange being October rather than April or May, but we are a month away. Um, and at that, that um, meeting we'll have elections for the church council and also for Deanery Synod this year. So if you're interested in either role, church council member or deanery synod, meeting with others from across the Chalk and Nadder Valleys as well, then please let me know and I'll make sure you know what is involved and can think about it further. We're not able to celebrate harvest this year in the normal way, simply because we can't bring produce into church and offer it as we normally do. Um, so first, we encourage you to donate, if you can, directly to Trussell Trust or Alavare, either goods or money to those charities. Um, we will have a pick up the theme of Thanksgiving for Creation next Sunday. Um, and for that service, we welcome back Canon Sue Wallace, who some of you met during the summer when the home team were away. Uh, so Sue will be back next week to lead and preach at that service of Thanksgiving for Creation. Before then, of course, we do have on Wednesday morning our Holy Communion at 10 o'clock. Let us now stand then for God's blessing. God give you grace to follow his saints in faith and hope and love and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Thank you for joining our worship, and there'll be another similar service next Sunday. If you've enjoyed these services, you may like to consider making a donation to help with the cost of our online services, and you can do that by visiting our website, www.wiltonparish.co.uk, where you'll find a donate button at the top of the start screen.